it's like 55 already, 56, going up to about like 60 something, so a really good day. So I know this range is gonna be fucking packed. Hey, how's it going, everybody? It's your boy, Big Ball Vlogs, Big Ball Shooting, Big Ball Entertainment, and we're at the range today because I got a new toy, and you may have seen my reel that I posted a couple days ago, um, and if you didn't see that, you may have seen my video that I posted uh, maybe a couple months ago about this shotgun right here, which I dubbed the KS7 Killer. This is the Turkish Hatsan Escort Boltak Bolt Pump Action Shotgun. In plenty of my other videos, plenty of my other videos, I told you I'm not a shotgun guy. But, you know, if you got, if you need a weapon for home defense, I think this is probably the most effective weapon that you can buy. Doesn't take much to learn how to use it. You don't have to practice it, but pretty much, you know, not like in the movies where you point it down range and it just blows everything up. You know, you point in the right direction with the right load and it's going to hit the target. Um, the reason that I kind of like the, the bull pup configuration this is because i like everything short for one but especially the home defense situation i you know i don't gotta I don't, you really don't have enough room depending on your 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 living quarters to wield a 22 inch barrel shotgun around corners so for me shorter the better for home defense um previous video to that i mean i gotta bring that back out to the range to let you guys see it did some modifications to it but previous to the owning these two uh, shotguns um i had bought a charles daily uh honcho 12 gauge bird head style like the the shockwave style shotgun all right didn't like it that much because you can't you know this this is really er unergonomic i took it to the range they're like you can't shoot that here it's it's too destructive it doesn't have a stock on it so on and so forth so i kind of went into the to the safe for a while then i modified it so now it's ready to shoot so i'm gonna probably bring that out but then i came across this and this was again what i call the ks7 killer because it essentially is you know like ks7 ish right and if you don't know, KS7, I'm referring to the Keltec KS7. Um, it is pretty much the you know, same form factor, same kind of carry handle, little nuanced differences that make it not a KS7 or direct clone. But when it came down to it, the reason I said this over the KS7 is because one, I am biased. I absolutely hate Keltec. Um, even though I like that KSG and I like that KS7, I refuse to buy one of their weapons because when I handle the KS7 in the store, you just got to go out and play with one and you, you always get KS, you know, Keltec's great butt. I'm like, I don't want the butt. I want Keltec to be great. But when you handle like a KSG or KS7 and you mess around with it, you know, the, 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 the slide feels like kind of gritty. The KSG's got that little short action on it. And then when it came down to the trigger, by the way, this gun is empty. It's clear. Um, when it came out of the trigger, it felt like I was pulling a trigger on a, on a, on a Nerf gun, like something that had a bunch of toy springs in it. It just made a, a weird noise. I'm like, I don't want this. Put it back on the shelf. And at the time, it was about 400 bucks. So this came out and this gun, when I bought it at the time that I bought it, was about one hundred ninety nine dollars. You know, pay the FFL fee, pay the shipping, probably about two twenty five to the door. Um, and I absolutely love it. Absolutely smooth. If you've ever run like a Mossberg 500, this gun is absolutely smooth. It came with a lot of cool features that I pointed out in the last video that, you know, I'm not going to get too deep into it because they're pretty much the same features on the other one. But the thing that it came with, like it came with the pre-built in Picatinny rails, uh, KS7, you got to buy these. Um, it came with, uh, rear sights on it that are like AR-15 style sights. So you have adjustment for both elevation and windage. Um, it also came with a threaded barrel. So this one came with a muzzle brake uh, and it also came with a thread protector. And another thing that I liked about it um, that the KS7 KFG styles don't do is it ejected from the side. If you watch a lot of videos, the guys who own the Keltec brand shotguns are complaining about the fact that when it spits that brass out of the bottom, it is very hot and it tends to burn. You say you got to wrap your arm up with like duct tape or wear long sleeves or something around. So all those put together and the price point, you know, really turned me away from the KS7 KFG style shotgun. As much as I like them, I don't like Keltec and then the price. $199 to the door. You cannot beat it if it breaks, throw it in the trash. If it breaks on the trash, I'm pretty sure because looking at the manual, we're getting down in a second. Hot Sun's probably going to, you know, really, you know, hold up their own on the warranty. Um, a lot of guys did a lot of videos on the K on this uh, on the pump action version of this. Everybody absolutely loves it. But one ninety nine if it breaks on the trash. Right. Go buy another one. I mean, I, I don't know. I mean, you got to be burning down, burning them down to, 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 to break it. Um, most home defense guns, you're going to come out and play with it, train with it a little bit and then put it in the, in the closet. But at that price point, you know, with the fiber optic sight and everything, I'm like, man, how can you go wrong? For a home for a home gun, if you don't have one, go buy one, right? But you know, uh, again, I'm not the shotgun guy, but I've never owned a semi-automatic shotgun, 
until now. So let's get into the meat and potatoes of this video. This weekend, just showed up actually yesterday. It's a little bit heavier, by the way. Just realized this is a little bit heavier. This showed up. I saw this in a video when I did the research on the Hot Sun pump action, and um, I came across this. This is the Hot Sun Boltec Semi Auto. Semi Auto, guys. And it rock. I mean, I, I'm, I'm about to, you know, in a minute, I'm going to put some rounds to it. But for me, this is this is the one that I wanted. This is a semi-automatic bull pump shotgun. Doesn't have no crazy ass like 50 round magazine sticking out the bottom of it. It doesn't have anything that's, you know, like awkward, like an AK-47 style. I mean, it does have an ambidextrous charge. Yeah, we'll get into that in a second. But it, this is the gun that I wanted. I wish this would have came out first before I bought that one. But this one came out. I found it online. Um, and it's, it's actually, I, in my opinion, prettier than the one that they originally I thought they were going to release. But found this online for 225 Paid the $25 uh, what is it, $25 FFL fee and maybe about another 20 bucks of shipping. So, you know, a little bit under, under 250 around 250 and change um, shipped to the door. And right now, I'm in love. And we're out here today to take a walkthrough of it, um, take a walkthrough of the gun, show you what it looks like. I, have, I didn't see any videos before I bought this. I wanted to see whether or not you guys have shot it. But we're going to run some rounds through it. I got a, a different variety of weapon, I mean, different varieties of shotgun shells here. Um, but what I want to do is I want to take a quick walkthrough uh, of the gun. And then we're going to put some rows in it and we're going to, you know, run it. Um, I got about 25, let's see, 25. I probably got about 40 rounds here that we can run through. Um, maybe not all on video, but we're going to see if this gun runs at all. We're going to see if there's any issues. And for the record, or just for, you know, video purposes right now, and the camera is facing from the left. So this is the left side of the gun. I know a lot of guys were hitting me up on the last video talking about whether or not this gun was uh, left-handed. Like, who makes left-handed guns? But no, it is not left-handed. The ejection port is on the right side of the gun. What happened in that last video was, because I'm using the front-facing camera, it'll probably be flipped when I play this back. So it looks like, from where I was, the, the, the position I was in the last time, it looked like the gun was left, but it's not. It's actually, it's actually the right side of the gun. Charging port is, I mean, the uh, ejection port is on the right side. This is the left side. This is my right hand. So let's get into it, guys. Let's get into this gun, and then we're going to take it down. We're going to, I ain't going to take it apart. This one looks like it's a little bit more difficult to take apart. I gave you my opinions on the last one. If you were into taking guns apart, you know, it wasn't the most easy gun to take apart, but you can definitely do it. Um, I don't really even know how to take this apart. I can see there's a, 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 an amazing manual that tells you how to take it apart. I do see that there's some seams in here that allow you to get into the gun, but I'm not going to do that for now. I hate doing stuff that ends up probably breaking stuff and losing screws, so I'm not going to I'm not going to do that now. I'm going to run the gun as is and see how it runs, but I wanted to walk through it real quick and show you what you get for that 225. So, up close, I'll try to get as close as possible. Here's the gun, here's the configuration. What I just noticed is that holding this gun and this gun, this gun does definitely feel heavier. It's a lot more meat to this one than this one. Um, but there are also slight differences in the gun that you might want to know about before you go out and buy it. One, it still has the uh, Picatinny rail on top for your optic. It still has the fiber optic sight. It still has the two pick rails on the side for your light or your laser. But it also has on the bottom here another Picatinny rail for your low mounted accessory. Maybe a forward grip on this one because this is a bullpup shotgun. It does have like a 18 and a half inch barrel. It's still full length barrel, but the action is pushed back to the back. So make this overall length shorter. This is actually shorter than my bird grip with a uh, with a pistol brace on it. Actually, it's about four inches, four to five inches shorter than my other shotgun, the uh, the the Charles Daly. So very tight, very small package. There are some other things that I want to show you. Still has the crossbody safety on this. So if you want to lock it uh, into safe, you're going to hit this button that goes through the body. On the one side, it is red. So you know, I got always the analogy that I use: if you see red target's dead or if you see red something you know make a make it up to make you aware that the gun is on or off safe at the muzzle end of it a change that you get you don't get the muzzle brake so i was actually surprised to see that this not did not come with a muzzle brake this time the other one does it does come with a threaded barrel and i almost wish that they made this a little bit longer because it is very cool it's a, it's actually just a threat protector but it's very cool and it's got a bunch of muzzle brake style holes in it but once you screw that all the way on as you can see here there is a little bit of barrel that extends out and covers up those holes so if they would have either made this a little bit shorter which they probably couldn't because they would make it a uh, short barrel shotgun this would probably be a very very cool muzzle brake now for the other one i do run it with the muzzle brake and it came with a threat protector that i never put on never tried it so i'm not really sure how much of a difference the muzzle brake on that one makes compared to this but we're definitely going to see how this feels because in the video that i shot with the pump action with the muzzle brake on, this thing has some ass to it. It's going to kick a little bit. But that's not probably going to hurt as much because it's got this nice cushion, thick rubber butt pad here, which is going to absorb some of that. And I was actually very surprised to see on this version of the shotgun, it comes with an adjustable 
uh, comb, cheek comb. So you can adjust that up to get the right height. If you choose to run uh, an optic on top of this is probably going to be a little bit higher because you do have the high rail, which is probably like, you know, your A2 site or your G3 site on a, on an H and K. So you're probably going to need that if you choose to run an optic because your face is going to be a little bit higher to look over top. Personally, I have not put an optic on this yet. I do prefer to use the sights on the back. If I do run an optic, it's probably going to be a low profile like pistol optic that I'm going to just mount onto the uh, pick rail here to keep it as low as possible. And I have not mounted anything to the rails, but I want to kind of try to keep the weight down on this. Uh, once these get loaded, these get pretty heavy. That's another thing about the KS, uh, KSG. 14 rounds of shotgun shells, 12 gauge shotgun shells gets really heavy. Lead and uh, brass gets pretty heavy. So I want to try to keep the weight down on this. I, I also, for this one, I thought I would let you know on the previous video you may have seen that I ran a shotgun saddle on the pump action. Yeah, you're not going to want to do that. There's limited space on the uh, left side here for that. So I had to mount it here. There's nowhere to mount it on the right side. Um, and yes, it will punch you in the nose when you're bearing, when you're tucked down on this rifle and you pull the trigger. Or you, when you pull the trigger on the shotgun, it will punch you in the face. So you don't want to do it. I took that off. But for the KSG style shotguns or, you know, anything with a pick rail on it, they actually make a lot of aftermarket shotgun shell saddles that will actually saddle or, yeah, side bag saddle. You can get two, uh, it'll have two uh, different holders, one on the left, one on the right, that will mount to the pick rail and you can load up all your additional shotgun shells. Right now, I haven't figured that out yet. So I don't want to really, I don't know if I want to mount a lot of weight to this versus get like a bandolero or something that will carry those shells off the gun. But for now, I'm going to leave it as is, leave it as is, and um, pretty much run it and see how it runs. Um, let me get into this box. So in the box, you're going to find the one important component that you need to run this gun, and that is the charging handle. And the charging handle on this shotgun is ambidextrous; uh, can go in from the left or from the right. I have never had an uh, an option to run an ambi charging handle, so I'm not sure how I'm going to run it. But for today, I am going to insert this on the right side of the gun, which means I'm going to have to reach over to rack it. Um, I think for, you know, maybe defense purposes, the way that I load this is probably going to de depend on where I have my shotgun shells. If I have my shotgun shells mounted to the left side of the gun, I'm probably going to keep that on target, pull one in and load it in and maybe want to do this because I'm not, you know, like there's, it doesn't feel like I can get to this. It's not long enough to get to do that AK style rack. Um, so I'm probably going to, you know, play with left and right sides on this. But for now, for this video, it's going to be mounted on the right side. It does have a last round bolt hold open. So when you push that back, that will hold open for you on your last round. And to release that action, which is, um, again, I'm not, you know, that versed on uh, semi-automatic shotguns, never really owned one, just did a lot of research on which one I wanted to buy. The release of the, uh, the bolt is here. You press this little piece of metal right here and that sends that bolt forward and that will put the shotgun shell into battery. So going through the gun, um, it looks good. It feels good. It is majority polymer outer shell here. So the first thing that I guess you were wondering is, you know, where's the metal? Well, the metal is back here in the receiver. This is all metal. You also, from what I understand, if you look at this side of the shotgun, there are these little imprints here that say, let me see what they say. One says thermo defend and the other one says Dura defend. Apparently this polymer or whatever they have on the inside of it has been designed to absorb the heat from the semi-automatic action. So if you look through the manual, it'll tell you that that's what that means. It means that it's going to absorb that heat. Um, some shotguns, you know, they have a heat shield to kind of keep the heat away from you. Well, apparently the polymer frame on this has been designed to do that for you. So very nice. Like it. Aesthetically, it just, it just catches your eye. Um, you can take this pick rail off if you don't want to run it. Like I said, I did find that um, with the last shotgun I've been running it, I had to do a little bit of modifications. That peep sight on this, I don't know if you can see it, but that peep sight is very tiny. And that's, that's, uh, that's like too tiny, in fact. When I was looking through it, uh, I could barely make out the target because the hole was too small. So what I did was I took a drill bit and I just ringed that out, made it like twice the size. Now I can look through that peep sight and get a good sight picture and see the large, uh, in, in, in comparison to the rear hole, the large fiber optic on the front and still see the, the target at, on, the, on the other side. It also has the, uh, how do we call it, not a peep sight, but it also has the notched style flip up sight like that. Usually an AR-15 has, you know, a small peep sight hole and a large peep sight hole. Well, this one has a notched style uh, sight and a peep sight. So looking at the notch, if you, you know, were running the peep sight, I would say there's no difference. Pick one and run it together because the notch is about the same size, but I think you can see above the 
above the fiber optics sort of giving you a picture a sight picture down there um whereas the peep sight it was so small you couldn't even like for me i think this target is probably about 20 maybe 20 yards away the the, the patterning target down there is 20 yards away i couldn't make it outside to make that bigger and i do prefer the peep sight over the notch sight um easier to pick up easy to get in it and for me with my vision i just can see everything whereas with my vision since that notch is so tiny it kind of looks look a little blurry i can see the fiber optic but everything looks a little bit blurry i know some people say have pictures uh have target focus over sight focus but i'm usually the opposite i need to see where my sights are to get accurate hits i gotta kind of see where those are um what else is going on with this also in the box what you're going to get which hot sign provides and i don't know if i showed you that in my previous video you're going to get a very nice um uh quick this disconnect sling this is this is actually an awesome sling i got two of them now so i'm going to definitely be running these and it will attach to your the the butt stock end of the shotgun through one of the two quick uh sling mounts there so with that said man that's pretty much the rundown of the gun um don't know if i mentioned it in the previous video um it also has the ar-15 style this is a soft soft rubber grip AR-15 style grip. So if you want to change that out with your AR-15 style textured or um, ergonomic grips, you could do that. And that is pretty much it. It is a nice, well-built, I mean, like I said, compared to a KS-7, KSG style shotgun, I don't have the complaints that I have about it. Like I said, you just pick up a, shot, a KSG or a kel shotgun and do this. It sounds like it's rattling. It sounds like there's something loose in there. Like there's no, there's something rattling back in here, but it's probably just the the, the spring or something in the back, but it's just that, you know, KSGs to me and KS7 just feel like crap. You know, I'm biased, but yeah, it feel like crap. This gun feels good. It feels nice, heavy. I mean, like solid stout. There's no loose. There's no wiggle. There's no flex to it. There's no flex. Well, maybe a little bit of flex in the foregrip there, but there's nothing that feels like crap, even though it only came in at 250 bucks this show, sub $300 gun. Very nice. I like it. Um, uh, like I said, I'm going to be running this thing and see what we can get through it. But before that, I know a lot of you guys, and I didn't do it on the last one. A lot of you guys probably want to know about the trigger. That's one thing I know with pistols. A lot of guys are talking about triggers. I know now that I'm shooting long range, a lot of guys talk about triggers. As I've said in many of my other videos, I'm not a trigger snob. So I'm not like, you know, I've, I've shot triggers that felt like staple guns. I've, I've shot triggers that felt like they were, they were so light you can breathe on them. I just got to know how it's going to go off or how it's going to, how I got to control it. But uh, as far as the trigger, I think these are pretty nice triggers. So one thing I want to do is I want to give you a, a measurement on the last trigger because we didn't do that. So again, back to the pump action version. This is a, a pretty sweet trigger, by the way. Um, like I said, feel of it. It, it, it doesn't have really, it doesn't have a wall. It's got a pretty long take up like that. So it's going to take a little bit of time. It feels mushy like a Glock trigger. And then you don't feel a wall and it just goes off. Like it is literally just that easy. I don't know if you heard that, but like you just squeeze on it. And it's got a nice tactile thud to it. So very nice feeling trigger. It's just not, no, there's no wall there. Like I think my, my Charles Daly has a wall. So you can feel it, like hit that wall and then you pull it. But now with this one. But what I wanted to do, because you guys may, some of you guys may want to know is I wanted to do, because I never really do this. I, I only started doing this since I started shooting uh, long range. I want to do a trigger pull test to see what the actual trigger pulls at. So let's get that taken care of real quick. We're going to do this. We're going to use uh, a uh, Wheeler dead pull trigger test here. We're going to get that on there and I'm going to pull it. See if I can do this. We're going to see how that breaks. That broke at three and a half pounds. Let's do it one more time. See what it does. A nice three and a half pound trigger on that. I mean, like I said, it's very nice. So we'll do that again. That one broke at four and a half. Let's do it one more time because I feel like the the, the trigger guard. I mean, the trigger was a. Uh, I feel like the uh, the hook was was high up on the trigger, which probably uh, added to the to the weight there. So we're gonna get that closer to the end and try that again. Ah. Uh, Move the handle. All right. Now one more time. Here we go. It's really light. There you go. So, yep, three and a half. So, three and a half trigger, three and a half pound trigger on it. Very light, in my opinion. Uh, my my uh, precision rifles are about three, two and a half, three. Very light trigger, very smooth trigger at that, too. You don't feel any crunchiness. You don't feel any grittiness. You don't feel anything bad about it. Let's take a quick look at the semi automatic version. So semi-automatic version, we'll do the same thing. I think this trigger feels a little bit heavier, but we're gonna see where that pulls at. Nope, 
three and a half pounds. Let's do it one more time. Definitely don't want to get your hand caught in there when it does that. So we're going to try one more time and we're going to see what that pulls. A little bit over three and a half pounds, but yes, very, very nice trigger. And both of them are metal. They're not polymer. They're both metal triggers. Don't know why I'm yelling because I'm mic'd up. But yeah, they're both metal triggers. So with that said, we're going to check the range. We're going to see if everybody's cool with me lighting up down here a little bit. I am at a private range and the owner of this range has allowed me to probably pull the trigger twice. I might be able to get a, a five round dump on it just to kind of see if it runs them all through, but I don't want to risk getting kicked out of here. For, so for the most part, uh, we might load the magazine up and we will put as many down range as we can. One thing I didn't check on this, I don't even know. I, I'm going to be honest with you, I, didn't know, I don't even know how many rounds it holds. I do know that the pump action holds, I think, six. Um, because it is imported, I think I might have mentioned in the last video, because it is imported from uh, out of the country, that is the advantage that the KS7 has over the Hassan. Because the KS7 is U.S. made, it's a seven round shotgun. Uh, because this is imported, there's a limit on or a restriction on how many rounds the shotgun can hold. So it came with a limiter plug in it and it also has a crimp around it that prevents you from putting the full amount of ammo in the shotgun. I've heard that there are ways to get around that with some of the shotguns that have a thread on magazine like uh, the Benelli style. But for this one, um, I did take that gun apart and I think getting the magazine out of the receiver is a little bit more difficult than I want to try. And it doesn't really allow you to do it from the back end. So... If I do end up taking this apart, I'm going to check this out, but I haven't yet. We may do a follow-up video, video. I see that beyond this little barrel nut here, I mean, this barrel uh, magazine uh, holder here, there is a threaded barrel nut there. So I'm thinking that might allow this to come apart. And what I do know is, is that there is no, it doesn't feel like there's a plug in here. So I've stuck my thumb in there all the way down in there, and there's no plug in there. So we're going to actually fill this up for the first time and see how many rounds this can hold. I have... Three different size rounds with me. I've got uh, two and three quarter. I've got two and one quarter. And I've also got some one and three quarter shorties. And I know the, 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 the question that everybody wants to know is whether or not this runs shorties. And I'm not going to spoil it right now. But when we get up to the shorties, we want to see if this thing runs. I'm not going to spoil it. I'll tell you that the pump action, I think I did a video on that one, did not run the shorties. It, um, it, it's hit or miss on whether or not they... You know, they actually load into the chamber without getting all stuck or flipping around in there. And then for some reason, no matter how hard I racked that slide, it did not have the momentum to eject them out of the gun. So I, I double fed and all kinds of things that I wouldn't want to have happen in a real fight. So, yes, I would not recommend running the shorties with the pump action. But let's see how this does with the shorties. So I'm going to check with my uh, range uh, buddy here. Sir, you all good? Good. All right. He says, I'm good. We're going to load a couple rounds in here. We're going to take a couple uh, shots. We're going to start off with, um, I don't know. Let's start off with these. I got these from Palmetto State. I got a, a, a box full of these. Uh, ever since I started shooting gun shotguns, you know, I got to have the ammo to go with them. So these are the Fioki Defense Dynamics. These are two and three quarter, 1250 FPS, nine pellet uh, buckshot. We're going to put a couple in. Let's see how many it'll hold. And then we will... Uh, See how it uh, shoots because uh, I didn't adjust the sight yet, and I did have to do some shot, shot adjustment on the other one. So first off, let's uh, see how many how many two or three quarter shells this thing will hold. All right, so here we go. One, two, come on. I didn't get a land. That's going to bite you. I'll just let you know right now. I hate this type of follower because that bites you when you try to get the shell in there. So that was two. Three. Let's get that up a little bit higher. Four. Five. Five, two and three quarter shelves. Oh, dropping them. So it definitely does not have the volume. It's five. And again, I don't think there is a limiter in here. I think it would be if I if I rack one in right now, I could put another one in and we'll make it well five plus one, six total. So yeah, KS7 does have the magazine capacity advantage. So let's take a couple shots with this. 
see how it runs. All right, here we go. Nice, first one. Okay, first one, stovepipe. Do not eject it. Let's get that out of there. And that could have been me, but we're gonna see if it, and this is a brand new gun, so we're gonna run some more through, see if it uh, opens up a little bit. My target's flopping around. So uh, let's try it again. In fact, what I wanna do is, let's move the camera to the other side. All right, here we go. Spool pipe, stove pipe again. Woo, not good, not good. Not starting off too good right now. Three for, three for five, not too good right now. Four for five. Not liking it. Not liking it. Let's do one more. And that one came out. Four for five. Again, those are the first five rounds. So, let's get five more in there and see what it does. And again, I've never shot this ammo either. So hopefully maybe we change out ammo. It could be an ammo thing. Not sure how uh, how this ammo runs. Never ran it before. Like I said, just got a bunch of it. Probably run it through the pump. I don't think I've ever run it through the pump either. So we'll run through the pump and see how that goes. I think I just got five in there. Let's try one more. So four for five. We didn't have too much luck. The gun is all oiled up and ready to run. So, yep. Okay. Let's try it again. See what we got. First one goes in easy. Here we go. Now, I don't know if there's, you know what I should have read? I don't think there's an adjustable gas system here. Maybe there is. Maybe I'll go through the manual and see if there's a gas system adjustment here. But um, I don't think it said anything about having an adjustable gas system. So let's just run it and see what it does. That one worked. There you go. There you go. Short cycle did not pop it. It's getting better. Okay. So now we had one. Oh, there was another one in there. So we had one failure versus the three on the first one. Let's get this one fired off. Eject it. Good. All right, so it seems to be getting better. Maybe there's a break-in period that we need to go through with this. Let's get uh, five more in there, see how they run. It's not the fastest to reload either. I feel like that, uh, that action release is probably a detriment to this gun because it's in the way. It's not like other shotguns where the magazine release is um, on the side, or the, or the bolt release is on the side. It's actually in the carrier, which, like I said, you gotta kinda press it down to get it out of the way to get the action to work. So I don't know about that. I don't know if I like that one. Design-wise, that might not be in a great design. Okay, so, Let's get one in and let's put another one in it to give it that full six round capacity. All right, here we go. Let's see. Let's give it a couple doubles and see if it pumps them out. Did not.
You guys are seeing this real time, baby. It is not spitting out this, this ammo. I think that was the last one. That was not the last one. Wow. That was, I think that was the last one. Yeah. So yeah, you're seeing in real time, man. It is not feeding that reliably. It is definitely oiled up. I don't know if you can see that, but inside there, you can see the piston in there sliding back and forth and that is fully oiled. So don't know, don't know. Let's try some different ammo. Let's try some, I swear I bought some uh, herders, two and three quarter. I do. That's brass though. I mean, that's a slug. Sorry, I'm off camera. So I got some herders, two and three quarter, one ounce rifled slugs. Let's try these and see what it does. Gun's shooting great though. Target's getting tore up down there at 20. Um, I'll give you a look, of, a look at it in a minute. So these are, these are herders, two and three quarter, 1400 feet per second, one ounce rifled slugs. Let's see how these cycle. No. Here we go. Woo! Likes those. Really likes those. So maybe what I'm experiencing is the home defense ammunition's fault and not this shotgun. It probably just doesn't like that particular round. So what we're going to do is, just because I haven't, Let's run a couple through the pump and see what they do. The loading on the pump is so much easier because it doesn't have that little follow on the bottom. Look how much faster I can load the pump. All right, so the uh, Fiocchi Defense Dynamics pump action. Let's see what we got. They run great out of the pump. They run awesome out of the pump. All right. What we have up next, out of the semi-auto, I'm going to run. I usually don't like running these because I, 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 they, they allow you to get one more round in it. These are the Herders 2 and 1 quarter self-defense loads. These are running at 12.50, and this is 6 pound, I mean six pellet double out buck. I don't like one of these, so we're going to run maybe like four or five of these because I don't, like, for some reason, they're just so hard to find. Um... And it's so hard to find uh, the shorter shotgun ammo. Like you can't find anything two and three quarter, uh, one and two, three quarter, like the little minis. They're just, they used to be all over the shelves. And I guess maybe guys found that there was no significant difference in that one round in, in the cost and they stopped making them. So we're going to run five of these or four of these. Give me five. See if they run through. I think five is a good representation of whether or not they actual cycle or not a little bit shorter all right here we go targets flopping around down there because of the wind forget it let's run it safety zone I think a lot of that is me. Like I think I am not absorbing that shot and it's probably slowing down that action. Nope, that's not me, I don't know. Didn't even pull that one out of the, round, out of the chamber. So, all right. Not great right now, not great. We've got a lot of failure to ejects on this. Next run. We wanted to know whether or not it would run shorties. The previous gun, the pump gun did not run shorties. These are the Federal Shorty shells. These are running at 1250 feet per second, and it is 15 pellet, uh, four, number four size buckshot. I'm just gonna put one in because I already know the results here, but I want you to see it for yourself. All right, so here we go. 
This is one round. Here we go. Didn't kick it. Let's try another one. Like I swear I feel the action running, but it doesn't kick it out. This gun doesn't like, it It, it, it only likes powerful stuff. It ran the, uh, the slugs, but it won't run anything. I mean, it's not that it won't run, but it's, it's having trouble running anything else. It, it, it's having trouble running the two and three quarter, 1250 velocity. It's having trouble running the 1250 velocity, also two and three quarter. So definitely got to go through and see if there's a, a, an adjustment for the gas block here. Um, that would allow me to get um, better running on this because I think it's a gas issue. And being that this is a first time run, um, and I did scan through the manual before I burn these last five rounds, I'm going to check that out and see if there's a way to adjust it. So, by the way, they have a beautiful, beautiful manual for this thing. This is like a little picture brochure. It's absolutely beautiful. But scanning through it, I don't see anything on how or if you can adjust the gas system on it. When you get to the point where it just explains how to disassemble it that's just to tell you how to clean the gun it doesn't actually have anything that says you can adjust the gas system on it to work with different types of rounds so i'm going to leave that one up to hot on to tell us you know how we can get more reliability out of this gun so with that said we got five more rounds five rounds left and i'm probably at like 40 minutes on this video so i hope you like long videos we got five more rounds of the two and three quarter Fioki. Maybe six more rounds. Again, I know this is a new gun, so I uh, I'm not gonna give it too much of a a hard a hard time, but I'm just used to stuff working the first time. And you know, all that criticism I gave to Caltech, I don't want hot sign to catch that same heat so we're going to go with the five that we just put in there let's run it see if they pop out of here i'm going to try to make sure i'm not i'm not impacting the, the action is gum i'm really getting into it maybe it was me That was five. Maybe it was me. I mean, I don't know, man. Let's try one more. I mean, it ain't, it ain't yeeting them, though. It ain't yeeting them like spitting them across. They're just falling right out. So it ain't kicking them hard. So maybe I was limp shouldering the gun and, and slowing down that action. Maybe after 30 rounds, it's starting to loosen up. I don't know. I don't know. I'm just going to let you see what I, see what I'm doing so I don't defend it. Let's try another one of these. This is the, the shorter one. This is the uh, gun's starting to get a little bit warm. This is the uh, uh, two quarter, uh, uh, two and one quarter inch round. Let's see if it does this one. Maybe it's, like I said, maybe it's loosening up. I don't know. Let's see. So no, it didn't like that one. Caught it. I really do think it has a, a, something to do with the gas system. And let's try, like I said, I know it likes to run these. One last try, because I got one left. The uh, quarter round slug. I know there's two of them in there. The rifle slug, let's do two. Let's see what it does. See if it pumps them both out. Here we go. Choke this down to make sure I don't cause the action to foul up. Ah, feel that one, man. Woo! But it did pump them both out of there. That, it likes it. It likes those, likes that. It likes that high-powered round. Um, the higher-velocity round, it liked those. Those were 1,400 feet per second. I don't know if I want to shoot a lot of those because, dang, feel that. But, um, yeah, that's it, man. I mean... Again, I told you I was going to get out here and test it. I do like it. I think I'm going to have to, you know, let Hot Sign kind of like watch the video and, 
and tell me what they think would be the cause of uh, the problems I was having. Maybe it is a break-in thing. We got 25, 30-ish plus rounds. We've also fired a bunch of the shorty shorts. I fired a whole box of those, which is what? I mean, we're in this box. Well, not a whole box. We still got like six or eleven, four left. So we probably about five or six rounds out of that. We've done a lot of different rounds here. And, um, whew, gassy. Whew, the gas is right in your face. And that's a good sampling of whether or not this is going to run or not. So while, hey, I gave, dude, let's do the thumbnail. While I gave Caltech a hard time about their KS7 KFG hot sun, you got to let me know what's going on with this one. Hey, thanks for watching. Thanks for watching the channel. Talk to you later.